Hello people, welcome back to the Corgi64 project where we're building a virtual uh, computer from scratch. Uh, last time where we left off we had uh, done these load addresses and uh, this time we're going to take a look at doing storing. So we'll be able to load and store stuff from memory. But uh, uh, last time I didn't quite have enough time to do it, uh, but there's one more thing we need to do with the loading of the addresses and we need to fill out our opcode table. Uh, so let's go ahead and make sure that we do that. Uh, so we'll need to, uh, let's see, what we're doing is we had our um, LDA, LDB, and LDC, which are 0, 4, 5, and 6. So let's go ahead to our CPU.h and fill out those things. So we've got uh, 0, 4. <clears throat> that would be, oh wait. 0, 04, that's up here on the first line. Uh, LDA, LDB, and LDC. I believe that's what we wanted. LDA, LDB, LDC. And that should that should fix that. So now we've got that entered into our table of opcodes. And it should be available to our processor now. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to have the similar thing. Um, instead of loading, we want to store stuff from our registers into our memory. So let's go ahead and build those functions in our CPU.h file. So let's go back to CPU.h and we'll go to our memory opcodes. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just build one of these for right now and then we will... Um, And then we will, let's see, then we'll build our tests and everything for that. So let's see, let's go over here. We'll do uh, store, I think this is STA. Let's take a look at that. STA, STB, STC. So STA, there we go. And what we'll end up doing here is we'll actually have, um, let's see, what do we want to do? So we want to store, so we want to send it we want to actually set the value of this thing so we'll take uh, we should essentially reverse the side so if we copy this let's see so if we put this equal to the a register value that should work uh, we'll have to see <laughs> I'm just kind of throwing this out there so we'll go to our tests and we'll write a test for it let's write a test uh, void uh, test sta we'll give it a pointer to our CPU and what we'll do is we'll set our C register or our A register to some sort of value uh, 128 sounds good to me and then what we'll do is we'll do store um, oh we'll also need to set uh, let's see, so we need to set this thing. Uh, we'll need to set, we'll have to set our instruction value to a value uh, that will be um, where we want to store this thing in memory. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll get this instruction value and let's take a look at what that instruction value is. Let's go back up here, it'll be an I64, right? So we want to set that to some value in our memory. Uh, let's see, how much of our memory do we have? We have uh, 32 bytes, um, and of course our our values, our 64-bit uh, values are 8 bytes each, right? So we have to do this, uh, probably set it up in uh, some sort of way that, or the, uh, the maximum address that we can have is uh, this number minus 8, right? So, uh, or uh, 31 minus 8, right? So let's just store things at uh, address 16. That way we know we have plenty of room uh, in our memory space. So let's do that. So we'll store it at address 16. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll store um, A, right? And then we'll give it our CPU. And then what we'll do is we should assert that uh, the address at, um, <clears throat> or the value at the address 16 actually has um, the value of 128. So we're going to say 128 equals, and then we're going to put the value of that address there. So what we're going to do is we'll come over here, and we'll copy this thing, 
and uh, from our CPU fetch, doesn't matter, we're going to get one of these things over here, and we're going to copy it over here, and then we're going to change it so that way we have the correct offset, right? So we want the offset to be uh, 16, and it's going. we're going to do it from, yes, from the beginning of memory, we're going to add 16 bytes, and that's where we're going to start reading, and we're going to say, okay, at that, at that point, at byte 16, we're going to read 8 bytes, and we're going to see if the value of those 8 bytes is equivalent to 128. And so that should be that. And then we'll do CPU print status. Uh, there we go. And that should be our test for the test STA. Let's do that. Let's do test STA with C. And now we should be able to run this thing. We'll see what kinds of mistakes that we made. So we'll do, let's see, we should do a build.bat. <clears throat> We've got a, let's see, we've got an executable. So if we run it, um, let's see what we get. Uh, we get, um, let's see, oh my goodness. Mm, it looks like we're stopping somewhere. Let's see what we've got. Because shouldn't we get, shouldn't we print out the CPU status for all of these things? Why are we only printing out one? Let's see. Uh, oh, you know what? Because I didn't build the test. We're, we're going to build our tests, not build our original uh, thing. So let's see. So we should be able to run, run test.exe. Here we go. All our tests passed. And our A register is 128. That's great. Um, let's see. Also, uh, well, it passed. We, we're, we're printing out our CPU status. We're not pr printing out the status of our memory because normally our memory is really large. Uh, but in this case, what we can do is uh, we could say, okay, let's take this. Um, Let's take this and uh, just for just for our purposes, just to see if things are going right, let's uh, print this value out. So uh, memory at byte 16 is uh, this value, and we'll print this out. And I think this will be what a lawn uh, double. I think we have to do that, or a lawn um, integer value. Let's see if that works. Let's see if that builds. Uh, no, uh, we're missing something. Oh, we're missing a semicolon at the end here of our printf statement. That's fine, but let's do it. Okay, now we can run our, oh, we don't wanna run our main exe, we wanna run our tests exe. And here we go, we can see memory at byte 16 it, uh, is 128. Um, of course, I didn't put a new line after my print statement. Um, that's why we're we've when we print our CPU status, the this A starts here, but that's fine. So we know that we've got 128 uh, was set in our memory. That's wonderful. So now we've got that. We can go ahead and go back to our CPU.h file. And what we're what we're gonna do is we're going to let's see, let's go down here and find where our uh, STA is, and we're gonna copy this and we're going to copy it twice and we're going to change up what we need to so we want to have stb and stc here and over here this is going to be the b register right here we'll have the c register and that should be all that we need to have our stb and stc so let's go over here to our tests and make sure uh, let's write some tests for this make sure that they work and then we'll add it to our CPU.h uh, opcode table. So we've got an STA, uh, we're gonna change this to STB. So we're gonna have B and we're gonna put say 512 here and we're gonna put it at, um, uh, we'll put it, yeah, we'll still put it at the same spot uh, at uh, byte 16, that's fine. And then we'll set this to 250, or actually 512. And that should be that. So we'll have STB. So test, uh, test, STB. And we'll do one more here. We'll grab the STB, copy it, paste it, and then we'll change it up to have STC. And we'll have the uh, C register be some other value, 1024, that's great. And we'll set our value we're testing for to be 1024. 
and then we'll set this down here to r run our test for um, STC. There we go, so we have all our tests. Uh, let's build it and run it. Let's see what happens. So build tests, and we'll run our bin tests, and here we go. Oh, it looks like we made a little bit of a mistake. So it looks like we've got, um, let's see, B is still 258. That doesn't look very good. So the assertion failed for 512. So setting that uh, 512 does not work. So let's go back to our test here. So we've got our test for STB. We're using 512. Um, we're setting the instruction value equal to 16. Um, let's see. We're, oh, we're calling STA. We should be calling STB here. This one should be calling STC. Okay, so we had some typos there. So make sure that you that you're actually calling the correct um, the correct function and then we'll go back to our uh, test we'll have to build our test again and then we'll have to run our test.exe and it looks like all of our tests pass um, let's see so we've got um, 128 512 and then 1024 for register C and it looks like we successfully uh, set our values from our registers to our memory. That's wonderful. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go to cpu.h and we're going to add it to our opcode table. So let's go back to our our reference here and it looks like our opcodes for STA, B, and C are 0, 7, 8, and 9. So let's go ahead and do that. So we go to our opcode table, so 0, 7, uh, STA, STB in 08, and STC in 09. So now I know we haven't written any programs for our main program yet. We haven't used any of our new commands yet, but that's okay because uh, at least we know that they are there and they're available. Uh, we'll be testing that a little bit later and we're coming up on having pretty much a minimal CPU. Even though we've got uh, quite a bit of, um, quite a bit more instructions to do, uh, there's actually only a few more instructions that we should add, and then we'll have essentially a minimal CPU. In fact, uh, we'll be able to do everything that all of our future programs will be able to do um, by just adding a few of these, uh, a few of these jump, um, a few of these jump uh, instructions, right? So once we get those into place, we'll actually have everything that's necessary uh, for that we want to do uh, for the future. Uh, the only reason that we're adding on uh, some of these other instructions here is essentially for speed. So we want to have, uh, we don't want to write our own, uh, we don't want to write our own uh, instructions for say copying these values from register to register we don't want to write our own shift um, left and right instructions we could do that if we wanted to but um, it would be nice to just have an instructions that actually do these things and in fact some of the old uh, CPU designs did not like um, let's say for example uh, let's see, the Commodore 64 had a, a 6502C processor, I think, something like that. And it had a version of the 6502. The 6502 processor did not have any uh, instruction for multiplication like we do. We have an instruction here. We just have one instruction. We say, okay, multiply. The 6502 did not have a multiply instruction. You actually had to write your own code to do multiplication with all the rest of the instructions that were available to you on the CPU. Uh, and that's because they had a very tight budget on transistors and multiplication uh, is kind of a very transistor heavy um, operation. So what we're gonna do is uh, we have a virtual machine. We don't have any uh, limits on our tr uh, transistors and the transistors that we do have physically on our chips are run into the billions now. So we don't have to worry about that. We can create as many instructions as we want uh, for speed and for convenience. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, so we're going to work on a little, having a little bit more of these uh, instructions uh, next time. Thanks for following. Uh, Till next time.